Welcome to my channel. I want to talk about some breaking news that should have been breaking nine years ago, but because our media is so horrible, it's just now breaking. But before I do that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for commenting and liking and sharing them. And thank you most of all for subscribing. My subscriber count just keeps growing and growing and growing and I can't explain it. it. It blows my mind. It's not something I ever would have expected. I have to tell you, I have had blogs in the past that never got very many viewers. And I just thought nobody was interested in what I had to say. But now it seems they are. So I don't know. Maybe it's because times have changed. I don't know. But anyway, you're here. You're watching. And so... I'm going to keep talking. You see the headline. This is a story that just broke five days ago. And it's about the Trump-Russia collusion hoax. Now, there's been reporting on this over the past nine years. But now they're actually getting a hold of documents and sources that prove that the United States intelligence agencies reached out to foreign intelligence agencies and asked them to spy on 26 Trump associates before he ran for president. Back in 2015, that's almost 10 years ago. All of this was illegal, <clears throat> and the five eyes were involved. The five eyes is a term they use to refer to the intelligence agencies of five different countries, the United States, Great Britain, Australia, France, and Germany. So, you all over there across the pond, you got some problems too. This isn't just an American problem. <clears throat> you know, intelligence agencies have a tremendous amount of power and very, very little accountability. And it's really concerning when they get involved in spying on their own citizens. That is, in my consider, in my opinion, that is crossing the line dramatically. Now, one of the contributors to this article is a, a man named Matt Taibbi, and I'm going to play a little bit of a um, of a uh, live stream that he did talking about this article, because I think it's important that you understand what's gone on here and realize we got a lot of work to do. We've got some real serious problems with our intelligence agencies. And the citizens of the countries involved should be up in arms. They should be angry as fire about this because it's illegal. It's not allowed, and yet they're doing it. So I'm just going to play you a little bit of this clip. All right. Sorry, that was just some. <laughs> it seems like a, a, a random person uh, couldn't hear me. Um, not a random person. A valued listener and valued valued viewer. Um, so, uh, in those previous uh, stories, we all worked together. It came out great. I, we did some stories in Racket. We did some stories in uh, in public. Uh, but essentially, it comes down to this. This is their scoop. Um, I just helped them work it up. I had um, sort of the privilege to help report this story out. This is a significant story it's more than a one-person job it's more than a two-person job it's probably more than a three-person job uh we had to scramble even just to get this much out uh, as quickly as we could so uh this being their story it comes out on public first but that doesn't mean that there's not going to be a lot of uh content on racket about this in fact we now have a, a surfeit of leads and other places other things to follow up um that's going to occupy us for a little bit. So what is this story? Uh, well, let me uh, 
for, start first by talking, uh, showing, uh, sharing a screen. Um, you might remember this document. This is uh, the so-called Noons memo, which was sent by uh, California Congressman and th uh, then Chairman of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, Devin Noons, in February of 2018. This memo was widely panned in the media. Uh, in fact, it was so panned that Nancy Pelosi called for Nunes uh, to step down uh, for writing a deliberately dishonest memo. This memo um, argued that there have been widespread improprieties uh, in the FBI's um, efforts to obtain FISA FISA authority on uh, a Trump age, uh, I'm sorry, a Trump aide, a former Trump aide called Carter Page. And it went on and listed a series of uh, missteps, errors, uh, omissions, et cetera, et cetera, essentially saying that there had been an improper uh, surveillance operation involving at least one person dating back to uh, the summer of 2016. Again, this was widely. Um, sorry, thanks. Thanks for the folks saying uh, correcting me and saying Nunez, Devin Nunez. Um, this memo was hugely controversial. It was panned by everybody in media. There was a bogus story that actually became a, a kind of the subtext of one Twitter files uh piece uh, there was a bogus story that this thing had been uh, propagandized by russian bots that turned out to be uh kind of a hoax that was generated by the hamilton 68 website it was one of the revelations of the twitter files it's one of the first things that michael and i worked on together um but uh why is this document important this document is important because it was the product of an investigation by this House Permanent Select Committee on Investigations, better known as HIPSI. We now know that there were basically two teams. There was a main team of HIPSI investigators that was operating out of uh, an office on the Hill uh, at Congress. Then there was a smaller team that operated out of what they call a small room in Langley whose actions uh, were closely monitored by the CIA. Uh, their ingress and egress was controlled by the CIA. This smaller team had to work on site. They conducted uh, sort of a separate investigation from the rest of the group. But I bring up the, new, uh, the Nunes memo, the, the Nunes memo, because the story that we are basing our um, exposés this this week it comes from the same pile of documents and sources uh and human sources that this Nunes memo comes from now remember this group of investigators uncovered not only the uh improper fisa uh, surveillance which and and they were vindicated in their judgments about this a year later when the uh, obama appointed by improper, he means illegal. Uh, Inspector General of the Justice Department, Michael Horowitz, issued a very long and blistering report uh, documenting 17 errors and omissions uh, in the preparation of that FISA warrant and all basically everything that uh, that was in this original Nunes memo was um, expanded at great length, along with many other things that the public didn't know in the Horowitz report. The Horowitz report, for instance, uh, is where we found out that the story about the infamous P tape came from a subsource of, of Christopher Steele's, the, the British spy, and uh, that it was something that came up uh, in jet, quote unquote, uh, in jest over beers. Uh, and there really was no solid sourcing behind that. We find out that the CIA thought that that document was uh, just internet rumors and was against putting it 
in an intelligence assessment. Um, but this was solid information, solid work, solid research. They also f were had a hand in, in uncovering the crucial fact that the Steele dossier was paid for by the Hillary Clinton campaign. This is one of countless details that had we known contemporaneously, had had the facts come out at the same time as the original story, we might have had a completely different understanding of this entire scandal. Uh, as it was, it seems like a characteristic of this entire scandal is that there was always a delay. Uh, the people who were doing the bad thing tend to be a year, two years, three years, in some cases even four years ahead of release of the documents. And today's story is an indication of that. This uh, Nunes memo, this Hipsy investigation, they got some stuff out, but not all of it. Uh, there, were, there has been, uh, from that time, dating all the way back to 2018, an ongoing struggle to declassify or release uh, other reports and other research that this, that this group uh, did. And some of it ended up being declassified in the waning days, actually in the waning hours of the Trump administration. I'm gonna show you some of that. I'm gonna put the link to this video and as well as the article itself in the description so that you can follow up on this if you want to. Um. Documentation. It was widely overlooked because the world was losing its mind over January 6th at that time. Uh, but some of it what didn't get out. Here. There was Stop. a... I just want you to understand that what you get when you tune in to TV news, what you get is well-prepared propaganda. That's what you get. You, you only have to look at the fact that if you, you know, if you paid attention to this thing like I did when it was going on, I actually blogged about some of this. I blogged about the the uh, so-called uh, Trump server that was in a closet somewhere contacting a bank in Russia. <laughs> it turned out to be uh, DNS queries, which if you know anything about the technicals of the internet is not a way to contact anyone. It's just a probe to identify whether a system is alive and identify its name. It, it's ridiculous. The, the whole story was ridiculous. But if you paid any attention at all to this thing, you would know that there was a man named McCabe who was disgraced and thrown out of the FBI. You know what he is now? He's a commentator for TV. Another one, Andrew Wiseman, disgraced, thrown out of the FBI. Now guess what he is? A legal commentator for the, for, uh, I think it's NBC, but I'm not sure. One of the major TV programs they get him to come on and comment about trump's cases like number one he's an expert and number two he'd tell the truth <sighs> if you know anything about the case that the uh, enron case in houston you know that andrew wiseman is as dirty and unprincipled and unethical as a person could possibly be so you know, when I see him come on TV, I know everything coming out of his mouth is going to be a lie. And that's just the reality of it. That's what we have today in our modern world. You know, the Internet is a double-edged sword. It gives us a massive amount of information. But it also gives us a massive, massive amount of BS. And you have to be able to sort through that and figure out what's true and what's not. And that's often not easy to do. And so, to some extent, you rely on honest, ethical reporters to let you know about stuff. And there just aren't very many around. There's certainly not any in the mainstream media. The New York Times, the Washington Post, the NBC, ABC, CBS... CNN, they're all lying through their teeth constantly. It, it's like, I don't watch any of that. I, I just have stopped watching all broadcast television news because it's all lies. 
I watch the local news because I'm interested in what the, what's going to happen with the weather, and I figure the meteorologist isn't going to lie about that. But the political news that they put on the local channels is just as full of baloney as the, the news they put on the, the mainstream channels. And here's another thing i got to bring up. These talk shows like uh, Hannity and uh, oh, what's some other ones? Uh, I can't think of her name, the, the liberal on the left-hand side. Uh, they, they get these people on and they, they argue and they talk over each other. And I don't understand. What is the point? Why does anyone pay attention to these people? They're just jabbering total nonsense all the time. So, you know, I have subscribed to uh, paid news services that I trust to give me the truth. And this is one of them, is Racket News. Uh, it's, it's not a lot of money. It's $50 a year. So, you know, that, that's not going to hurt me. And uh, at least I know these guys are, are trying to uncover the truth. I don't know what their political leanings are because that doesn't get introduced into their news telling, which is the way it should be for all journalists. But unfortunately, 80% of the journalism or 90% is just blah, 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 lies and, and half-truths and opinions and not news. It's just a ridiculous situation we're in. <sighs> I mean, I used, to, I used to spend a lot of time on Twitter trying to read news, trying to find news. And there were some good things uh, that you could find on Twitter. But the the... The word that comes to mind is acerbic. The the acidity of Twitter was too much for me. I couldn't handle it, and I got off, canceled my account, closed everything out, stopped my blog, just stopped it all, and just said, the heck with it. I'm done with all this crap. And then somehow I started this up, and people are listening, and it blows my mind. But you know I do appreciate it. I really do. I thank every one of you for watching me. And I pray for you. I pray that you'll have an abundant life and that you'll live a long time and that you'll be healthy. I pray that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you'll be anxious for nothing but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, You'll make your request known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.